Oh, you stop doing work. Carry on. Oh, some more. Okay, okay. Final. Oh. Yo. Nice. Yeah. Hello everybody, my name is Paddy and I'm a librarian with the National Library Board of Singapore. And you are watching From Book to Cook, the cooking show where we learn about Singapore's history through food. In today's episode, we explore a unique recipe for rendang. Taken from a book found in the National Library's rare collection, it's called The Mem's Own Cookery Book. First published in 1920, it is a collection of 420 recipes put together to help expatriates in Malaya create budget-friendly meals for their families. This recipe is unique in that it involves the use of curry powder and is served with spaghetti. And through this recipe, we will learn about the story of curry in Singapore. So hang on to your tummies, let's go meet our special guest for today. Hello, Chef Devagi. Hello. Hello, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, it's nice, definitely. Yeah, so um, today we are going to be talking about the recipe from the Men's Own Cookery Book. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've written uh, books about Indian heritage cooking. Yes. Like curry is used a lot in some of your, your, your recipes and in the books that you write about. So, but this cookbook has recipes that call for curry powder. Yeah. Um, but it's from the 1920s. So, how is curry used in this book from the past? compared to some of the recipes of today? Uh, definitely it's different, especially uh, considering the fact that the Men's Up book right, is written by a non-Asian. Mm. Um, so the idea of a curry those days was typically one that's of the mindset of the British. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the curry powder, what we use today is totally different from what people used to use before. So how do these households uh, get their curry? Each family has got their own recipe for making uh, a, a curry. In the olden days, they used to just get the different whole spices, roast them, and then have it ground into a curry powder. And then they will formulate from there. Like for example, they might have chilli, coriander, turmeric, cumin powders. And then according to what curry they're going to cook, they might add more chilli, less chilli, more coriander powder, less turmeric powder. So how did these people uh get the specific mix if they were not creating the spice blends themselves, would they go to somewhere? At a specific time, a lady who specialises in grinding spices will go over to the house. Ah. So these ladies uh, in the Tamil, they, they, like to, they will use the word masala chi, that means the woman who grinds the masala. So she usually counts with a grinding stone on her head <laughs> and walks from house to house in the mornings. And then once she goes to that house, she puts the stone down and then the lady of the house might say, uh, I want to cook fish curry today. So this lady will take out all the different spices and mix it into a mixture, put it on the grinding stone and then she will grind it into a paste and give it to that, that lady's house. And then they will cook that recipe. In order to grind the spice, I remember from my childhood, or even these days, I do it myself. Uh, we go to the shop and we buy all the different spices. We bring it home and then we clean the spices. And then we might roast the spices, cool it down, pack it back into a bag and bring it to the meal uh, to have it ground. And the meal will usually keep it there sometime overnight or a few hours. And then you hang around there and then bring back the spice. And then the spices are already ground, right? They are very, very hot because yep. the machine is very hot. So we have to bring it back, then we have to spread it out on a newspaper or canvas to let it cool down completely before we can put it into a jar. And this might take two or three days. So these days, uh, people just buy it off the shelf. Right. How do the ones that you buy off the shelf compare to the ones that you make yourself? Number one, when you buy your spices yourself and you grind it, you know when you bought it and you know uh, the smell when it is brand new. Yeah. Whereas the ones that you buy from the shop, it's already packed. Though it has an expiry date for one year or so, you don't know where it has been hanging or it has been placed because spices cannot get sunlight on them. Number two, um, the taste of it, uh, like 
usually the packets will just say uh, ingredients, they'll just say chili, coriander, whatever, but they will not say how many percent of chili is in there. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you won't know whether it's going to be very spicy hot or not spicy hot. So the, the recipe for today... Okay, the recipe for today is, uh, interestingly, it's not an Indian recipe. Uh -huh. It's a, a rendang recipe. So, um, I, when I look at it, the, the way spices are used, traditional rendang is not done that way. We grind all the shallots and garlic and ginger and lemongrass and then we saute that stuff in the oil. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, with the chilli and mm. the turmeric and then we add in the meat. We do not add whole spices to the, to the rendang uh, recipe. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Men's Up's book, uh, the rendang recipe is totally done uh, differently. Uh, interestingly, um, different. So I'm just thinking, that, oh, I wish she was here there mm -hmm. now, so that I can tell her this is the way to But did, did you feel like um, the way she wrote the recipes was with her audience in mind, or was there a certain way? Because I, I, I know the book was written uh, to help other expatriates Expert, like, yes. like herself, right? Yeah, it's definitely um, not something that an Indonesian woman will do or a Malay woman will follow uh, unless they, they just want to see out of curiosity. But definitely the, the expats would have been wowed by the recipe because they may have eaten this kind of rendang. And they also know that uh, this has been modified maybe because uh, the original one is more spicier, more robust and maybe they, some of them may not like that strong flavour, so it has been fine-tuned. Yeah. I'm looking forward to trying it actually. Yes, definitely. We'll, we'll start cooking it in a while. are making Mrs. Kinsey's rendang. So tell us what's so special about this recipe. What is different from the normal um, rendang recipe is the fact that number one, there's a lot of curry powder used in this recipe. Okay. In okay. fact, she says, after you finish cooking, put it in a jar. <laughs> okay, that's yeah, very so special. Yeah, so it's like really, really uh, funny. I mean, I don't call it weird. It's like different interpretation by her and yeah. her time. Yeah. Maybe it was a thing in 1920. Maybe, right. <laughs> uh, maybe because they don't eat it with rice, so therefore they'll have a lot, they keep it in the fridge, they take it out and put it on their bread. I really right, don't know, right? right? How it is, yeah. So, so why don't you take us through the ingredients okay, for this recipe? Okay, first for making the rendang, of course, we need to have uh, beef. Yes. Uh, and um, from her recipe, the beef is cut into small sugar cube size. Okay. And then uh, the next important thing is coconut, uh, mm -hmm. fresh coconut. In her recipe, she, has, she says to grate the coconut. Okay. And then garlic, shallots and ginger. Uh, only one chilli. Okay. And then one lemongrass, a bit of lime juice and of course, uh, there's curry powder. Mm -hmm. Then I've got some like beef fat. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, we have the salt and sugar and a little bit of the grated coconut. Okay, over here I have vinegar. Now in her recipes, she say chutney juice. Right. Uh, so, you know, I really had to do an intensive research and what they talk about is just some of those brine or pickle juice. Ah. So that this, in my mind, I think this will actually help to tenderize the meat. I see. So I have, I'm using a bit of vinegar okay, to okay. this. Uh, and then some lime juice. So we need to heat up the dripping to make the oil right sure. so you just put this here okay and we just let this melt okay and then we have uh, coconut here okay we need only the thick part of the coconut the cream actually okay because the cream is the one that will eventually turn into oil when we are cooking ah, it. Okay. The other reason I think why she said that the dish can be put into a jar mm -hmm. could be because the fat will help to preserve it. Some chefs actually take as much as 10 hours to cook a rendang. 10 hours? Yes. The meat will slowly soak up the spices mm -hmm. and then the coconut milk and everything, right? So it becomes very tasty and very tender. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, because they've been cooked very long in that same oil, right? Uh, it can be eaten for one week. Okay, so this fat I'm going to transfer into a pot. Okay, so the beef goes in now. Okay. So I'm going to brown the beef now. What is browning? Basically, we got the other word to use is searing. Okay. So once the beef 
keep in touch with the hot oil, mm -hmm. it will turn brown. Okay. When it browns, it also seals in the juice of the beef in, within, so right. that when you eat the the beef is not dry. I see. I've got the water here. Just got it boiling hot. Mm -hmm. Pour it in here. Leave it aside for a while. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to like squeeze out the milk. I so, think anyone will learn how to grate coconut themselves make very good chefs. Okay. Because along the way, you'll cut your hand, yeah, yeah. scratch, just the there'll be blood in your coconut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's where the flavour comes from, is it? This is hot now. Okay. So I'm going to add in. Okay. So once it's brown, we add a bit of salt. Okay. Now I add in about half a cup of water. Okay. And then we will carry on cooking this until it's dry. Have you used this before? No, I was wondering what this is and if you could okay, tell me more about it. Okay, this is called, uh, well, in her book she says curry stone. We will just say it as a grinding stone in English at home. Mm -hmm. uh, or in Tamil it's called ammi. A grinding stone for the Indians uh, is very auspicious. It's not just used for cooking. Right. In fact, at weddings they also have this. The grandmothers of, or mother will present this to the daughter. It's a wedding gift. Yes. <laughs> and uh, they are supposed to be uh, not separable. So this is the child and this is the mother. Oh. So you will see this is actually made of granite. Right. And uh, it's rough. But this roughness is is sort of polished already. It's okay. quite smooth. So it's very well used, this Yeah, one. this is very well seasoned, very well used. What happens is actually those days, even in Singapore, mm -hmm. there will be ladies who specialise in chiselling holes here. Really? Yes. And the more specialised they are, the more bat nice patterns that they will chisel. Oh. And then once they have chiselled, we wash it and mm -hmm. then you can start grinding and when you grind stuff right they very smooth and nice I see but when it's uh, when the stone is very smooth mm -hmm. uh, when you start grinding it it will sort of slide and yeah. so you know it doesn't yeah. have the grip for you to right. grind it properly so okay. I'm just going to slice this chilli a little bit ginger slices okay the most fibrous ah, an uh, ingredient will be bash first okay so when I say bash right to oh. Hold one side and you lift the other side okay. and you do this. See? Bashed already. Okay. okay. So once you have all this right, yeah. then you start rolling it. See, you can see it becoming smoother. Right. Okay? okay. So we have to do this entire stuff here yeah. and then transfer into a bowl. I see. Please do. Uh, yes, please. I want to try. <laughs> so squeeze coconut milk. First, you use your hand uh -huh. and you do the squeezing motion. Okay. Because we want to extract as much of the milk from the grated coconut as possible, right? Right. Then I have a strainer uh -huh. and a bowl here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just take the coconut, squeeze. I see. You can even grind uh, uh, powders, you know, like spice powders. With this? Yeah. Doing it. But how long does it take, doesn't it? This feels like well, I would... you need to roast your spices. Once you roast your spices, they, they break down very fast. Uh-huh. Am I doing it right? Is this okay? Yep. In Indian homes, right, those days, when they want to do matchmaking, they want to find out whether a girl can cook before they get so, the girl to come in as a daughter-in-law. Yeah. They can test the girl by just asking her to grind a few stuff. From the rhythm, she do it, right? They will know whether she's a seasoned cook or she can't cook. <laughs> I, I think I don't think anybody will marry me after they see me doing this now. But they normally don't test a man, you see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, according to her recipe, we put in one piece of lemongrass. Mm. But you know, like based on me being a chef, I know that if I just put this like this, there's not going to be any flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm normally sure I'll just do this. She... Oh, okay. Okay, just open That's up, technique. put it together. Uh. Okay, you can see that right, this has become yeah. dry now. Yes. Okay. Oh, wow, that's actually quite fast. Yeah, so once it's dry, we add in the curry powder, about mm -hmm. 6 teaspoons. By implication, there's different types of curry powders with different kinds of dishes. So like, this is for beef, is there something else for like fish or...? Yeah, this is, if you're following the curry powders of the Indians, mm -hmm. yes, we have separate ones. It's actually separate concoctions, different types of spices that mix for the chicken, the meat and the fish. For example, fish will always have fenugreek. Fenugreek. Which is never found in the chicken or the meat dishes. And then uh, chicken and meat dishes will have a lot of preserving spices like cinnamon, cardamom, cloves and all that. Yeah. Right. So different different way. 
Okay, so add in about a teaspoon of salt. Okay, grated coconut. Grated coconut. Okay, now I use a lot in my in my recipe. Uh -huh. Grated one, the lime squeezed, a bit of the the Our chutney juice. The chutney juice, which is vinegar for today. You can use all this. All of it. Yeah. Okay, okay then. The cream, right? Yeah. Uh, we just take out as much as possible. So you're just skimming the top. Yeah. Okay, so we boil this until it reduces, it's dry, and then a lot of oil surfaces. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's quite mild. It's good for people who don't like spicy food. Yeah, okay. exactly. So I'm just going to turn off the stove. Okay. And then we can uh, dish it up. Okay. Nice, yes. Yeah, this is what um, the writer said to put into a jar. So you want to put it in a jar or in a bowl? This is, this is uh, I just want to eat it now. I don't want to keep it for later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, it smells really Shan, good. do you yes. want to try first? I like, want to try all of it, So, but I think I'll try the spaghetti the first, as intended by the recipe, right? I'll try it with bread. Mm -hmm. I'll try it on its own first. Yeah, Sorry. you should try it on its own. Mm -hmm. and tell me how it tastes like. Oh, the beef is very soft. Okay, I'm going to try it with the pasta now. Let's see how this would taste like. It's not something I'm used to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because my palate is used to like rice or like even with the bread. But I can see how in a European household, especially with maybe children, they would want something that's like a bit more familiar, like like the pasta. The pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then if we use the grinding stone, right, would, would it taste very much different from let's say like how we do it today with a blender? Yes. All the ingredients that we pound or blend has got and oil. Now this flavour oils when it's put into the blender, the blade just cuts, 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 cuts the ingredients so the flavour doesn't come out. Okay. But if you put it in a mortar and pestle or the grinding stone, you're actually bashing it and mm. you're bashing the fibres flat. Okay. So it releases all the aroma and flavour. Oh. That's why anything that is hand ground or pounded always tastes better. Uh, at first when I was asked to try this recipe and I was like looking at it I'm just thinking mm, maybe I enjoy it or not right but actually I, I, I like this taste mm -hmm. if you ask me if there's one ingredient that I want to add to this it would be like a chilli an extra chilli right and I can just eat it without um, my herbs like my normal rendang so I wouldn't call it rendang I would just call it a meat dish yeah. you should try my rendang yeah, I was my just version about to of yeah. so what is the difference from what you added here? Okay, a lot of difference. Uh, first, number one, I have a lot of uh, fresh herbs like turmeric mm -hmm. leaf, kaffir lime leaves. I have ex about two or three pieces of lemongrass in it. Then I also have the Indonesian bay leaves mm -hmm. inside. Um, I have curry powder, the, the same curry powder as what I used for this. Mm -hmm. But I added extra chilli powder. Mm -hmm. And then uh, instead of sugar, I used a bit of palm sugar. Palm like sugar. Gula, uh, like a gula melaka. Right, right. And uh, have more uh, thicker coconut milk in it. I see. Bigger pieces. Yeah. How do you find this? Mm, yeah. This is more what I think of when I think of rendang in the rendang. You see it in your smell. <laughs> <laughs> So we've come to the end of this spicy episode. Thank you all so much for joining us on this curryful adventure. And thank you, Chef Devagi, for giving us all these valuable insights on curry in Singapore. I'm Patty, and this is From Book to Cook.